Hey guys, and welcome back to Create Above and Beyond. So I've been doing a little bit of mining between episodes. Last episode we set up this rudimentary ore processing system to millstone all of the crushed ores that we get from mining. We also set up our first tree farm here, which, well, this thing is actually full. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to do something about this output chest. We also took a little trip into the nether to upgrade our tools to cobalt, and we built the Tinker's Melter here. But today I'd like to start off by getting a little bit more organised. I uh, I don't like all of this <laughs> situation we've got going on here. However, before we start organising anything, since we're going to be doing an underground base here into this mountain, it's going to require a lot of digging, and doing this just one block at a time is going to be very, very time consuming. Alright, so the plan to make our base building a bit easier is we're going to make up some rose gold. And this stuff we have to mix with create with a mechanical mixer. To help with the tool crafting, I've upgraded the melter to the Tinker's Smeltery controller, which does take some rubber, but we can get it in this mechanical press if we throw in some flowers and water. So to get the mixer, we're going to have to make a whisk, then combine that with another one of our andesite machines, and we get our mixer. And this really will be the last temporary setup. <laughs> we're going to steal the hand crank from here. So to make our rose gold, we need equal parts gold and copper. I guess we pour straight into this basin. Assuming that's actually possible. Oh, it is possible, nice. So that should, yeah, that put in equal parts gold and copper. And we'll move this over for now. Put on the hand crank, and it does nothing. <laughs> I think it has to be one block up. Oh, I see, this, has, this actually has a cog on it, which means I think we need a cog wheel and... Not that way. Cog wheel and a, probably a gearbox would do this. Yeah, if we place a vertical gearbox here, I think. Then put the hand crank on this. Now it mixes, but it's one too high. Okay. <laughs> yeah, rose gold. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. This takes. This actually takes a while. I have to say, though, these animations for Create are so cool. <laughs> this is just awesome. Oh, looks like we're finished. And we have half a bucket of rose gold. Just over half a bucket. I don't think we're going to have enough copper for this, though. We need eight for our plates for the hammer. Yeah, this full bucket here only gives us six ingots and eight nuggets. Which isn't really ideal, I think we're going to make up another full batch of this. But for this we need a little bit more copper. Oh, we got a zombie spawner here. This is actually right underneath our base. I'm not sure what the mob spawn options are in this pack, but this definitely could come in useful. For now we're just going to pick up all the copper here. No! <laughs> no, there's so many mobs down here. And these caves are dangerous. I'm a little bit too confident after being basically invincible in Divine Journey for so long. Alright, I managed to get our stuff back. We have a decent amount of copper and gold to work with now. But I was also able to pick up uh, quite a lot more zinc. Which I think we're actually going to mix in combination with copper to give us brass. And then we'll use the brass to get the anvil instead of using all of it on rose gold. As we want to keep uh, the gold that we have for the tools. Let's stop with the manual work though, I've hooked up a little water wheel to get this going automatically. Which seems to be working quite nicely, although I did have to increase the rotational force. It's a little bit hard to see like this, but right behind this larger cog wheel is the water wheel. If you then connect the large cog wheel into a smaller cog wheel, because this has a larger, a larger rotation, for every one rotate of the larger one, the uh, smaller one rotates faster basically. I don't know how to explain this really, but <laughs> if you hook up a larger one to a smaller one, you're going to end up with a, a faster overall output rotation. Then to pick up the fluid from this basin, I'm using these seared lanterns, which can hold any amount of liquid up to 100 millibuckets, and makes it super easy to transport this around. So we have uh, two blocks of rose gold here, which is enough for our tools. I'm going to make up the brass, and then we can get our, uh, our forge going. So I think we're just a couple of ingots of copper short actually to be able to get all the brass we need. But I'm also going to take this time now that we have the Tinker's Smellery. We can invest in these cobalt uh, repair kits and we can actually repair our pickaxe this way. Alright, picked up some more copper and we can now make our first Tinker's Anvil. But yeah, this allows us to make all of the extra Tinker's tools now. And the one we're after here is the Sledgehammer. So to make our hammer we're going to need a hammer head. I'm going to make casts for all of these, and the hammerhead we're going to use rose gold for. We'll also need some large plates. We are however going to go for the cobalt tough handle to give us the lightweight trait, which increases its uh, attack speed and also mining speed. But yeah, we also have this flashy, 
which I think increases the tool as we give it more upgrades. I think once again we're going to add a diamond to this. Yeah, this significantly increases the durability on this thing. Alright, so now we have a hammer. <laughs> and we have 3x3 three three mining, this is awesome. Okay, that took a little while to get, but I think by now we should start working on our base. Alright, so we now have a hole in the wall. <laughs> it's nothing much right now. But through this room here is where our, all of our storage is going to be. So this is just a really simple room with a bunch of storage really. <laughs> That's really all there is to it. And I'm not completely sold on this design, if I'm going to be honest. I think it's missing something. There's something not quite right about this. I also uh, went with stripped dark oak wood. But I think actually the stripped oak logs look a little bit better. Let me know what you guys think between these two. The plan for the walls is to like mix these up between the oak, the stone and the stone brick. And then a trim along the bottom we are using these flint blocks. Which actually are really cheap to craft, it's just four flint. But yeah, we just have some drawers for some extra storage. And a couple of our crafting benches here. Oh and before you guys comment about this anvil, I didn't actually see when we were crafting this that you could actually make it from zinc. So there was actually no need for us to alloy smelt this with all of our copper and make brass. <laughs> But anyways, we got all of our uh, storage moved out of this old hole in the wall. I still have to move over the Tinker Smeltery, but I think I'm going to build a separate area for that. To help gather all the building blocks we need, we're using quite a lot of stone here and we don't have Silk Touch. I made this really simple smelter, which is just a powered encased fan going through lava. And this thing can do like stacks at a time. Uh, it's really, really fast compared to a vanilla furnace. But yeah, at this point, I think we should move on and try to get to some more fun stuff, some more automations with Create. If we take a little look at our quest book here, we haven't really been looking at this thing. But this first page here is basically an overview of the full pack. This is our, our goal to get to space here. Last episode we completed the first quests to get the, uh, the wrench and things. So on chapter 1 here we have 4 challenges to automate and ultimately we want to fully automate these andesite machines we've been crafting. The first step to automate wood we have outside but this is going to get moved inside. Today though I think we're going to automate the kelp and hopefully also sand and clay. So to automate the kelp we're going to need somewhere to put this. And the general plan for this base is to have this one long corridor along the centre. It's going to be much, much bigger than it already is. And I think we're going to lower the sides down here and put all of our create automations underneath. And then we'll have some branching paths off to some separate rooms over here, maybe like a little staircase down below. But yeah, it's hard to really know exactly how to lay things out without playing this pack before. I don't really know the space requirements. But we'll get things figured out. We need to craft up a few more machines for our kelp farm. I think for kelp we're going to use a couple of mechanical harvesters. Alright, so I've started digging out a little space. It's not really much right now. It's, uh, oops. <laughs> a little bit hard to imagine how this is all going to be turned out, but imagine all of this stone is gone, and we have some pathways over top here, some rooms off to the side, and then generally we're going to have a big spaghetti of belts that goes this way for quite a while. <laughs> it's what the plan is anyway. But yeah, let's start laying out our kelp farm here. And we're going to use a similar design as the tree farm, where it's going to be in a rotation. And since we have six harvesters here, I guess that means it's going to be diameter 13 blocks. Man, this is going to turn out quite big, actually. <laughs> Maybe we should scale it back a little bit. Hold on, let me figure this out, actually. Alright, I think I got this thing laid out. Our hammer is now broken, so <laughs> it didn't last very long. But yeah, starting a base is always the most tricky part, and maybe there's a reason why people don't do create underground. This is uh, this is difficult. <laughs> you need a lot of space. But anyways, I've got the encased fan with the campfire down there for rotational power. Mechanical bearing on top. We're going to use two radial chassis here. And then you guys were saying last episode that you can actually use slime balls instead of glue. Let's try that out. Oh yeah, it doesn't even consume the slime ball either. That's really cheap. And then if you hold the create wrench here, you can see like the radius it's going to pull. So if we have it on 8, which is the default, it's going to pull all of these blocks to the side. So if we scroll with this, yeah, nice. All right, so now we've got just a four block radius here. We're then going to use the harvesters, similar to the saws that we used last episode. Except these things will harvest basically any crop or plant. 
Oh, the creepers. Oh, the creepers. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, there's one more guy down there as well. Yeah, this is a this is a dangerous uh, place to be right now. Anyway, since we're using logs and not the linear chassis like we did on the tree farm, I think we have to use super glue here. We can't use a slime ball. And then we will portable storage interface here to extract the items. And we'll also need somewhere for these items to be stored, which I think can be anywhere on the contraption. So I guess we'll just place a barrel. Uh, thank you for the suggestion on the barrel, by the way. It looks so much better than the chest. All we need to do now is fill in the water and plant our kelp here. Yeah, I think that's us flooded this place. We can just plant our kelp now. And I think that's actually us done with the farm. It was really simple to set up. And hopefully those ones there that have already grown should be harvested. Oh yeah, they're being harvested. Nice. <laughs> the interfaces should hook up. For now, let's just place a shoot into a drawer. So I'm not sure about the speed on this farm, but this is completely passive. We don't have to do anything. No inputs for this. So hopefully we don't have to scale this up. I mean, we'll see, I guess. But uh, yeah, I would call this kelp farm a success. But yeah, we still have so much digging to do here. <laughs> I think we're going to need a better solution, actually, even than this hammer. Or at least have something more durable. Okay, so before we tackle the sand and clay omissions, we're going to repair our hammer. And we're going to invest in some of these iron reinforcements. Which means that the tool or armor is less likely to take damage. So in this version of Tinkers, we have to make some obsidian panes. And then also cast those over iron ingots. And we get our reinforcements. And I think it's 24 per level of reinforced. Okay, there's 23 and 24 reinforcements. Hey, you. <laughs> You're not supposed to be in here. There, so now if it's the same as 1.12 was, there is a slight chance for the durability not to be taken off this. Alright, since this still has very poor durability right now, we need some more repair kits, but we are out of gold. So I'm going to do a bit of mining and then clear out a little space so that we can do sand and clay automations. Okay, I got a bit of a space prepared through there. Next, let's think about how we want to generate our clay and sand. So actually, the kelp we can mark off here. And the quest book recommends at this point we build some strainers. Later on, we can access sand through the gravel automation and we can crush this down, or even with the pulverizer. But for now, we have to use the sediment strainer. But this strainer recipe is made from canvas. And canvas, I think we can only get from straw or canvas rugs. And to get our straw, we have to mill some rice. So before I went mining, I did plant some rice here in the water. This rice we found in some of the structures we looted last episode. Hello again, creeper. There seems to be so many of these guys in this pack. <laughs> but anyways, we have to mill down our rice. I'm going to bone meal a bit more. I think we're going to need more than that. So while we wait on all this milling and washing, we do also need the other part of this, which is the strainer base. This is going to hold the sediment strainer in place. I remember using these in interactions and uh, they do have a durability, so I'm not entirely sure how we're going to handle that. But these strainer bases are made from iron bars. And I think we're going to start off with four of these things. Nice, so all of this rice is finished milling. We can craft the straw that we get from the byproduct into canvas. And then three canvas and six sticks gives us our sediment strainers. Alright, so just to test this out, I think we're going to place this above here so that we can extract from below these things as we have to place the water on top of these. So I think probably we're going to leave a space in between this. Ultimately, we want this kelp to be combined with the clay. We check the uses here. Yeah, we want to be making algal blend in a mixer. And I was thinking we do this maybe in like a cross pattern. Something like this. We'll put on our strainers to the bases. And if I remember right, you can actually use bait and bait pots for this to increase its efficiency. But from this, we're going to get a chance of sand, white sand, orange sand and clay. So we'll have to fill all the outputs for this somehow. Um, but this sand we can actually wash, I believe. Yeah, we can bulk wash this into clay. And same with the white sand as well, we can do this into clay and the orange sand. But for right now, let's just worry about getting these up and running. So if we place a water source in the middle here, these go in. Oh, they are going. This That was quick. Yeah, we get sand in this one. Some cobblestone. I wonder if that just fell in. I hope that just fell in. <laughs> if we have to filter in cobble as well from this, it's going to... Add some extra complexity. Yeah, this one gives us white sand. All right. So we haven't actually looked at this yet, but we're going to need a way to move things around. And for that, we're going to be using mechanical belts, which are super cool. These things attach to the shafts, it looks like. And these belts, we can put items around to move them. But yeah, to get all of these belts, we're going to need rubber again. 
And to get all of this rubber, instead of doing the flower and water method like we did before, I made this arboreal extractor. This thing is super slow, but it's been running for hours and hours by now, which has given us some resin. Oh, that is a cool texture. But yeah, this resin similarly has to go through this mechanical press. And this should smash into rubber or dry rubber. Yeah, just regular rubber, which then has to be smelted. And I feel like since we're going to be making a lot of this, we should set up a little workshop for our mechanical presses. At least until we have this fully automated, we can do it manually. But I'd rather not use the hand crank for all of this rubber. <laughs> it's going to be a lot we're going to need. So I've decided just to clear a little space just opposite our storage room. We'll have things like the mechanical presses here. Uh, we may also set up the, the smelter over there that we can do manually. So we do have to power all of this stuff as well. So I think we can just run shafts along here. Vertical gearbox takes it up. And then one more vertical gearbox on the side of this. It's spinning. Okay, nice. Now we just have to grab a couple of buckets of our resin. And it should do it automatically for us. You know what? I actually decided to move it up and over one so that we could uh, hopper this into a barrel. And all of our rubber should end up in here. So the cured rubber allows us to make our mechanical belts. I think we'll need a bit more than this though. While we're uh, crafting up some, some more parts that we're going to need for the setup, we have built up 10 stacks of kelp. And we also have a decent amount of clay from last episode. We're going to batch craft a lot of algal blend. This should last us for a while, I suspect. Oh yeah, this is a lot. <laughs> and we can even make use of this smelter here. Oh yeah, look at all those algal bricks. I hope we have enough andesite to mix with this. One and a half stacks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should get more andesite the more we dig though. Okay, so let's start hooking up these strainers now. I have five hoppers here, which we're going to point into the center one. You want all the items collected in one place. Actually, you know what? I think we have to move all this up one block. We're not going to have enough space down here yet. All right, I got all this contraption moved up, and I've also hooked up the next part of this. So coming off onto this belt is going to be the three types of sand, which is going to get washed by the encased fans. And then after this point on the belt, everything is going to be clay. So the clay that we do get from the strainers is going to pass through this andesite funnel, be allowed into the drawer, and then spit out by the other andesite funnel on the other side, and continue on through this belt. In fact, we may actually flip this 90 degrees, and then mix it with the kelp right here. Yeah, I think we might do that, but first of all, let's make sure that this step works. I'm going to take the funnel off this side so that all the clay doesn't spill out. So I guess that means we can cut the belt right... Not there. <laughs> we could just have the belt go into where the drawer is actually. And then we'll have to make sure this is all spinning the correct way as well. So we're going to hook up the water wheels behind this. And I think we can actually just get away with one. You guys said last episode it was possible to speed this up with some soul sand. So I kind of want to try that out. Let's maybe lower this into the floor one. And then to spin all of these fans, we can just put shafts, I believe, in all three of these spots here. And actually we'll put a fourth one here and that way we can connect up this belt. Yeah, if we do something like this, and then we belt from here to here. This belt is just purely used as a rotational extension from the middle of the water wheel. And then I think I want to start using these andesite casings as just decoration blocks. It does fit in nicely with the rest of the crate items. Hopefully that is flowing the correct direction. It looks to be. So both belts are now spinning very slowly. Let's go try that soul sand trick. And I think we did pick up one or two pieces of soul. Yeah, we did. Oh no, wait, this is soul soil. Don't think that's the same thing. I'm not a vanilla player, but <laughs> I think it's different. Let's go get some soul sand. So if I understand this correctly, I think if we place a soul sand block right here and spill the water everywhere, <laughs> then place another source block here, that creates the bubble column. And I think we'll need another source right here as well. Ah, soul sand has to go one block higher. Yeah, now we're at 320 SU. Okay, so now let's try giving this some items. If we throw some clay onto the belt, it should be put in the drawer. However, if we give this some orange sand, this is going to get washed by the three fans here. I'm not really sure if it's necessary to have three since all of them will be stopped on this part of the belt. But yeah, this washes into clay, gets put in the drawer. And I think, we, I think we're safe now to hook up the chute again. Which puts all the items on the belt. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> oh, I guess there, there can only be, what, 16 items in the one spot? Or is it just one? So yeah, the more fans we have, the faster this is going to go. But yeah, apart from the fact that we have durability on the strainers, in fact, let's go check how much they have left. Uh, about 200 uses left. Yeah, I would say we now have automated clay production. Now we have to mix this with our kelp. All right, let's see if we can try and figure out how this is going to go. So I made up another mechanical mixer. We will need some belt to take from this kelp drawer and also the clay drawer. Although we don't want this the same rotating the same way as this one. 
So what I think we'll do here is place replace this shaft with a gearbox. And that way we have the rotation going two ways. And then one more gearbox allows us to build some shafts this way. And then I think, actually no, we need one more rotation, don't we? Yeah, one more rotation going this way. And then we can belt into here two andesite funnels, one from the drawer and then one into the basin. Cool, so that's going to pl place clay in here. And then somehow we're going to have to spin the rotation of the belt. As If we think about this, this is going clockwise. We need it to be going anti-clockwise to take from this belt. Either way, we want two shafts here and a belt between them. Oh no, we spun around the belt the wrong way now. <laughs> I think placing this gearbox here, I don't think we can do this. Because that spins the rotation of this belt the opposite way. Ah, there we go. Yeah, we can just place the gearbox one back. Although that will probably throw this gearbox off now. Aha, we did it. We did it. Everything's spinning the correct way. Both of these belts point into this basin. I had to uh, grab the gearbox from the other side of this belt, the same side as the water wheel is, and then basically invert this twice with the gearbox to make sure this one was spinning the right way. And then we're also going to have to power this mechanical mixer. So I think for that we can place a vertical gearbox here, and then two small cogs. I think that should do it. Ah, we don't have enough speed though like this. Okay, so we're going to have to go uh, large cogwheel into small cogwheel for this then. Oh, this is this setup's going to get so bulky. <laughs> it means we have to move this over a block. Hey, we got it. We got it. <laughs> we're mixing. We're making alcohol blend. Okay, so now we have to deal with the output of this thing. Guess we have to take from the front. The back is uh, a, little, a little busy here. Okay, we have to double gearbox from the left-hand side to get this spinning the correct way. And then, where do we actually want this to go? Oh, we have to smelt this now. Ah. Huh. Well, let's make up another encased fan. We may as well do that right here. There's no point in sending the items miles away to, for it to be smelted. Okay, so how are we going to hook up this encased fan? We can't place it right here because it has to have lava source here. And then we can't power it from behind unless we remove this stone brick. But Unless maybe we add a shaft on here and then put the encased fan down. Does that blow the right way? It does, okay. So now we just need a lava source here, and be careful not to burn our whole base down. <laughs> I can already see this going horribly wrong. You know what, let's be safe, let's do another ring of uh, cobblestone. <laughs> okay, no fires please, no fires. <laughs> I don't think trapdoors can, can catch on fire. I hope not anyway. Okay, we got the al algo bricks, we just need an andesite funnel. That stores it in the drawer. Nice. <laughs> oh, this is so satisfying to set this up. We don't need this part. Oh, look at the belt spaghetti. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Let's just cover over this lava as well. Just so that we don't have any accidents. But yeah, now I think we can put our chute back down here. So just to recap, the clay and the sand come from the strainers. Washed on the belt. Offered in this oak drawer as clay. Then the clay is sent via this belt into the basin where it gets mixed with the kelp we're farming from here. Oh, and I also had to put on a little recipe filler here. If you uh, right click with the algal blend, it locks it to this recipe. And that way I think it prevents putting too much of uh, one or the other item inside. Although it looks like some planks fell in maybe. That might be from when I was uh, breaking stuff around here. But yeah, the output, the algal blend gets sent via this belt where it gets smelted and stored as bricks here. Which means that we can actually tick off the whole right side of this quest tree. We have clay automated, we have sand automated, we have algal blend automated, we have algal bricks automated. The next step in this line is to automate the uh, andesite alloy, which we have to mix the bricks with andesite cobblestone. Oh, and I noticed occasionally we do get some fish here <laughs> with this kelp form. You can see the little fish uh, unfortunately didn't make it and is now uh, trapped <laughs> on this farm. Yeah, there's a few outside here as well, that's funny. But anyways, I think this is a good wrapping up point for this episode. I've got a, a lot more cleaning up to do. Let me know what you guys think about these uh, log options, if we should go for oak or dark oak. And we'll be refining this style um, all throughout the series, I suspect. I really want this place looking awesome, like a really cool underground base. It's something I've never really been able to pull off. Maybe this wasn't the pack to try it though, since we need just so much space for everything. But yeah, this seems to be working really, really well. We're already up to 10 stacks of algal bricks. I'm going to have to do some more mining between episodes here. We are, I think, completely out of iron. And that little fail with the anvil earlier on left us with almost no gold. But yeah, next episode, I hope we can actually finish out chapter 1 here. We will have to move the tree farm. I'm going to start prepping the area for that. I'm thinking we actually put the tree farm on the opposite side of the kelp. And we'll dig out a similar space that we have here um, over on this side for the trees. I'm not entirely sure yet, but we'll figure that out. And then hopefully we can also automate the uh, andesite here as well. 
But yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Create Above and Beyond.